This week on Coyote Country, we roll the clock back to the fall of 2014 as my wife Susan had her sights set on harvesting her first deer ever. It sounded simple at first, but Susan wanted to take her goal to a whole other level by opting to use her archery gear. Not a simple task for the rookie hunter of the team. Little did we know how the story would eventually unfold as she witnessed firsthand the roller coaster of emotions and drama that a hunt can sometimes bring. Stay tuned as our team voted this hunt as one of the most memorable and favorite hunts of the 2014 season, and we think you'll agree. and welcome to Coyote Country. On this week's episode, you're going to follow me along as I take my bow and try to harvest my first buck ever. Now, October is archery season in our area, and we basically spent every weekend trying to get a glimpse of a buck. But to be honest with you, we never saw a deer, not even a doe, during our outings. It was obvious that after a couple of bad winters, combined with some predation issues in the area, had taken a toll on the deer numbers. Needless to say, our patience was being tested. As depressing as it was, there was a glimmer of hope since November was already upon us. Leo was optimistic that when the rut kicked in, that sooner or later the odds were that we'd catch a buck on the move. Well, today is November 1st. It's the first day of rifle season, but as you can see, I'm going to be hunting with my bow still. We were out here earlier this morning, sitting in the ground blind. Unfortunately, we didn't see anything, but we're going to give it another whirl tonight and see if we can uh, buckle happen to walk by. Despite the countless hours spent in the field, we're not going to waste any time and take you straight to the action that happened on that fateful day. So there we were, the first week in November with still no deer sighted. And up to this point we had no snow on the ground, making it difficult to spot fresh sign. But finally, that morning we received a dusting of snow, and with the full moon underway, hopefully this was going to kickstart the deer movement. Well, it's November 8th, and it's 8.30 in the morning. And we've been sitting here in the blind for about an hour now, and the good news is it snowed a little bit. We got a dusting of snow, so it looks a little bit more like Whitetail country. This is another example of the difference between men and women. Men like to read. Looks like big buck. And women. Like to read things about guys with rippling abs. But uh, one thing's for certain the deer aren't playing today. 
Haven't seen a thing yet. Finally, at mid-morning, we had our first buck spotted. But by the time we got the camera turned on and zoomed onto the buck, he was already past us. But it was certainly a nice sight to see and glimmer of hope, even though he was a small 2x2 two two and a future up-and-comer. One of the challenges during the hunting season is balancing and juggling family life. That I'm sure we can all relate to. In this case, our son Nathan was at a sleepover and Leo had to leave mid-morning to go pick him up. You're gonna be okay? Yes, I'll be fine. You're gonna be fine? Okay. Yeah. Filming by yourself. I know. You've never done it before. I know. Okay, good luck, babe. Thank you. What made it worse was Leo had a weird vibe and was worried that while he was gone, that the deer gods would send a buck while I was all alone in the ground blind. Can you see where this is going? Wasn't 40 minutes or so after Leo left that his worst fear and premonition became a reality as I was staring eye to eye with this awesome mature bush buck. There was no doubt when I first laid eyes on this buck that he was an absolute shooter. It soon became very apparent that this buck had an infatuation with the ground blind as he kept constantly staring in my direction. But then again, maybe it wasn't the blind that was the issue. Maybe the buck heard me shifting around, or better yet, the buck likely heard my heartbeat pounding through my chest. Regardless, it soon became very apparent that running the camera and drawing the bow was not going to be an easy task. Finally, after drawing and letting down my bow twice to adjust the camera and then once because the buck wasn't offering a favorable shot, the buck finally presented himself broadside and I took one last deep breath and settled my pin onto his vitals before sending the arrow on its way. <clears throat> well, I'm solo here by myself. Leo had to go pick up Nathan at the, uh, he was having a sleepover tonight and the book came in and he was gone. Surprise, surprise, I knew he would. And I had to wait quite a while because he was, I had to draw my bow a couple times and let it go because he wasn't giving me the right angle. And then finally he turned and I was able to take a shot. I'm going to just check on the video here and see what it was like if I hit him in a good spot and hopefully it'll be a down buck. Well, it's 1.30. And wouldn't you know it, you probably see I'm carrying a pack. Both an hour ago, I got a text from Susan saying, big buck, big buck. And I was just picking up Nathan. <laughs> so I knew, I knew it was gonna happen. Just had that feeling. But anyways, it sounds like she made a great shot. And we're gonna watch the video here just to make sure, but I'm really happy and sad, kinda. Happy for her, but sad I wasn't there to share it with her, but let's see. I bet you she's, she sounded really excited on the phone, that's for sure. The adrenaline was kicking in. Anybody home? <laughs> Susie? Yes. Right on. See? You got him? I did. See, I told you he'd be here when you, as soon as you left. Oh. I just... I guess we both had the same feeling. Uh -huh. I just knew something was gonna happen. Yeah, like 40 I minutes. Wait. <laughs> he was very cautious, but you, you drilled him good. I looked looked to me like I did. But, well, we've got some signs, some uh, fresh little spotting of blood on the snow, so I'll just follow the track. Well, it's 3.30 and we still haven't found the buck. We found some sign, but uh, he seems to be bleeding internally. So we've stopped following him. We're gonna come back in the morning and 
hopefully we can find them. Nice buck and Susan's first deer of the bow, we'd really like to find it. So that's where we're gonna leave off for now. It's 8.30 in the morning and it's the morning after. And it's a balmy minus 16 degrees Celsius. And I know it's a it's been a short night for some of us. But I can't say that I blame uh, Susan. She uh, she did good last night. We watched that shot over again on the video and actually it was a really good shot. So I'm not sure why we're not finding this guy, but we gave him three hours before we tracked him yesterday. And we tracked him for two hours. Found some good sign at the end, but obviously we pushed him. So we decided to back off and it's been almost 18 hours now. And with this cold weather, Hopefully he stiffens up, but we're all packed up and ready to go see if we can find them. So wish us luck. Don't go away. We'll be right back for more action on Coyote Country. Have a gander at this six pound tiger trout. Join Coyote Country on Facebook for live updates or check us out at coyotecountry.ca. We were thankful that it didn't snow overnight, but we had another concern, as when we reached the buck's tracks from the afternoon before, it was apparent something had beat us to the tracking job. In the snow were two fresh coyote tracks ahead of us that were no doubt onto the buck. It wasn't the start to the morning that we had wanted. No matter how you looked at it, it was bad luck, as it either meant that the coyotes were feeding on the down buck or the coyotes had pushed the buck during the night. All those raven noises we heard a while ago wasn't our buck. We've been on the trail here for an hour and a half and we've come across another bed. It's got some evidence in there. We just can't give up now. We gotta keep on it. Right, babe? Right. Hopefully we'll find them sooner than later. He stumbled. Look up there, look. Oh, he yeah, stumbled. He oh, there he is. Right here. <laughs> right on. Right on. Oh. oh, look at him. Oh, baby. Look, look at that size of the body of him. Get in behind her, baby. <laughs> right on, girl. High five. Nice. First. Yeah. What do you think? I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you've been waiting a while to put your hands on him. I have. <laughs> Right on, baby. I'm proud of you. You did all the tracking yourself. Right on. Looks like it exited a little further back. Yeah, a little bit further back. I'm but curious to see, because I know it was close to the shoulder where he went in. Well, he's nice. I know he's nice for a first buck. And the birds didn't get on him? Nope. Right on. We'll be able to salvage him, no problem. Now we gotta go find the truck. We're a long ways away from the truck. Yeah, we'll need uh, <laughs> GPS to find our way back. See where we are right now. Guess we'll have to, work will be starting here. I'll have to uh, cut them up and pack them out. No, we'll definitely pack them out. You know what they say though, eh? You shoot them. No. You pack them. You're my guy. <laughs> you have to pack them. <laughs> I found them. <laughs> you got yeah, them you did. You did a great job tracking them, babe. I'm proud of you. High fives, man. 
Well, here's the moment we've been all waiting for. We finally got some brush cleared here to get the cameras in. It's pretty thick of willows. Lift up that head, baby. I really like him. <laughs> so nice and chocolate. I like the mass on him too for being my first buck. I'm pretty proud of myself. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy with that for my first buck. Turn him to the side. Oh, look at the mass on the beams. Holy smokes. And to think you did it all by yourself, your all, first deer. All by myself, no pressure. Camera, Solo, running camera. camera. Bow. And he was staring at me the whole time and had to draw like three times and and release it three times carefully because he wouldn't take his eyes off me. It's like he knew something was there, but wasn't quite sure what was there. So I'm pretty proud. I'm just happy we found him. Yeah, that you did good job. Made each. my day. <laughs> Yeah, you put in your time. You were you were relentless for sure. You weren't going to give up. I could tell by the look in your eye this morning. <laughs> no, definitely. No, I'm proud of you, baby. That's a heck of a first deer. What a great buck, babe. Yeah, sure is. <laughs> I need to get back there and put my hands on him. It's okay if I touch him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at the mass on this beam. Anyways, on behalf of the Coyote Country team, we like to take this time and thank all our sponsors. Without their support, none of this would be possible and my wife would have never shot her first deer on camera with a bow while being solo. So Probably not. <laughs> hats off to you, babe. I'm proud. Thanks. <laughs> so I got my pack mule all loaded up and ready to go. There's the deer. It was definitely over 100 pounds. So I guess it's time to head for the truck now. Yeah, we got to book it to the truck before it gets dark. Mile to go. Follow me. Okay. Well, we made it in before dark. Sure did. I know. I think I've had enough excitement and exercise one day. <laughs> Ditto on that. I think my uh, oatmeal's long gone for breakfast. No, mine is. I can't wait to get home and have a bite to eat. Join us on our next adventure on Coyote Country. Now, before we wrap up this episode, We'd like to share with you a coyote hunt that Leo and I had been on together, where Leo managed to get a double header. So let's head on out to the action. It probably wasn't more than a couple of minutes when Leo spotted movement on his left side, and just like that, we had three coyotes enter the field. But these coyotes didn't react like most other setups. In fact, these coyotes kinda were lazing around. One of the coyotes was even just sitting there assessing the situation. Without doubt, we had their attention as they could hear the fox pro and see the fox jack, not to mention Ted. But for whatever reason, maybe they had full bellies, it seemed like they weren't going to commit in coming any closer. With all four coyotes still in the field, finally another coyote, which happened to be on my right, decided he couldn't take it anymore and was coming in closer to investigate while Leo got his 22-250 ready. How many coyotes was that? Oh, it was at least six. Six coyotes. We got two of them, but you know what it is. There was a few of them, as you saw, they were sitting around, and once you shoot, they tend to scatter, but uh, we called them in, actually called in two more, and got one more on them, and uh, now we gotta go retrieve these coyotes, but that was a great start to the morning, so. 
I thought I'd stop and pick up the Fox Pro Shockwave here before we go and round up these coyotes, but I'm telling you with these adjustable speakers, I was able to project the sound to where I needed it to go. And then with the Fox Jack up on top, that held those coyotes at bay. And of course having Ted here helped a bit, so, but really impressed with how it ran. And now we got to pick up these dogs. Another great epic morning here on Coyote Country. We finally got the two dogs in place. The left one here, the orange colored one, is the first dog that we got at 120 yards. And then this grayer, whiter one at 180. Both dogs are males. The Fox Pro Shockwave did its thing. But now we got about half a mile to drag these to the truck. So let's get to the next setup. Well, that's all the time we have for you this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And hopefully we'll see you next week for more action on Coyote Country. Coyote Country was proudly presented by CR Backwoods. Join Coyote Country team member Leo and his good friend Scott as they try their luck at a northern Alberta do-it-yourself fly-in moose hunt on next week's episode.